North Korea has been accused of preparing a rocket launch, according to U.S. officials. The Americans say there is evidence of increased activity at the Sohai satellite launching station. And earlier this month, North Korea conducted a fourth nuclear test. We're joined now by Robert Kelly, associate professor in the Department of Political Science and Diplomacy at Pusan National University in South Korea. So thank you very much for joining us. What is the evidence that America are touting in this case? Well, as you said, there is increased um, activity at the site itself, right? Um, there's an erector site. The erector has been expanded in the last couple of years. There's been sort of development around the site. There's increasing traffic. Um, it's also the case that around nuclear tests, you know, the fourth nuclear test was a month ago, the North Koreans have often preceded that with a ballistic missile launch. And so now people are saying, well, maybe they reversed it or something like that. But often these things go in tandem. So my guess is that's the reasoning. That's the logic. But in effect, I mean, this is uh, him uh, throwing up two fingers, if you will, here in the UK to the international community because there are sanctions that have been put in place after the nuclear test and Pyongyang just seems to be ignoring them. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the North Koreans are already pretty heavily sanctioned, right? So it's easy for the North Koreans to sort of go further because the North Koreans actually have already carried a lot of the pain. There's a big argument about whether or not we can sanction them further. I actually do believe that there's a great deal more that we can do. But so long as China defends them, particularly China defends North Korea's money, then it's really hard for further sanctions to actually bite deep, right? So as long as China is behind sort of blocking sanctions or inhibiting their expansion, then it's easy for the North Koreans to keep running. And that's what yeah, that's what's going on here, right? I mean, I think the North Koreans say, you know, we saw what the Americans did in Iraq and Libya, and if we don't have our own nuclear weapons and missiles, we'll be the subject of a regime change assault or something like that later. And so we have to have these things. That's the argument they make. And they've been saying that for 20 years. So China is the key here, but is there any way that the international community can put pressure on China to put pressure on Pyongyang? Yeah, and that's really the big discussion right now. There's actually a very wide-ranging debate on this right now. My own sense is, yes, that you're correct, that China is the key. The Chinese resent this enormously if you follow the Chinese media every time the North Koreans do something outrageous. You know, we hear a lot from the Chinese about how, well, you know, we can't stop them, we can't rein them in, and the Chinese media really dislikes this debate. But this is also really going to take off in Asia. It's no longer the United States alone that is insisting that China has leverage over North Korea. The South Koreans are saying this as well. South Korea has invested a lot of time and effort in the last three or four years to bring China around. And then the North Koreans went off and did this test anyway. So I think to a certain extent, you know, the Chinese are looking at a choice here. Do they want to continue to support North Korea? Or do they want to get along with the neighbors they have in Asia, a lot of whom don't want North Korea to have nuclear weapons either? South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, a lot of countries in Asia don't want North Korea to have nuclear weapons either. And this is good because this is increasingly forcing China to make a choice between standing with North Korea or getting along with the neighborhood. And that expands the discussion from simply just the United States versus China. If that's how it's framed, the Chinese will never bunch. Just finally, you're, you're living in uh, South Korea. I mean, how nervous do people get in the country whenever there is a spike like this? Um, actually, not that much. Um, you know, this is something when I first moved to Korea, like, you know, 10 years ago or so, I actually felt the same way. I thought, you know, all North Korean nuclear tests, you know, it's so terrifying. South Koreans have actually long since adjusted themselves to that. Actually, I would argue a bit too much. I don't think South Koreans actually take the North Korean threat as seriously as they should. But South Koreans have been living with this, like I said, for 20 years. The nuclear, you know, North Korea's had a nuclear bomb now for 12, 13 years. Um, and the South Koreans have actually, I actually find they deal with it rather well. I mean, like I said, I wish they actually worried about it more. I'd like to see South Koreans, for example, take missile defense a little bit more seriously. South Korea needs a roof. It doesn't really have one against missile assault. But the South Koreans are quite calm about it. Robert Kelly, Associate Professor in the Department of Political Science and Diplomacy at Pusan National University in South Korea. Thank you very much.